In this video, we're going to talk about successor trustees versus executors. What's the difference? Hi, I'm Richard Barrett with Smith Barrett LLC. I'm an estate planning attorney and one half of the estate planning guys. So wills, most people have heard of, most people are familiar when they walk in our office, they just want a simple will. And for some people that fits, for some it doesn't. But what often people don't understand is the difference between trusts and wills, but also the difference between the people managing those different uh, positions and what the responsibilities of the positions are. So at a basic level, it's important to understand that a successor trustee is named under the terms of a trust. It could be a revocable trust, an irrevocable trust, doesn't matter. You need a trustee to manage and control the assets of the trust. An executor finds their power and their duties listed in a will and in the probate code. So when we're talking about probate and we're talking about wills, there would be an executor involved if there is a will that names an executor. In a trust, there's also going to be a successor trustee. So the most common type of trust you'll find is a revocable living trust. And if those are set up for a married couple, for instance, which is a pretty popular way for couples to plan, both spouses would be co-trustees and in the initial phase. Then when one of them passes away, the other one simply continues as trustee. And when both of them have passed away, there's a successor trustee name. But Here's where there's a significant difference between a trustee and an executor. One of those significant differences is a successor trustee is appointed in the trust and there's no court process required for that person to step in and start assisting. Another big difference is you would have a successor trustee for after you pass away, but you also have a successor trustee for when you're incapacitated. That gives the authority to the person who you choose instead of some court, the person you choose to manage your assets, deal with your finances in order to take care of you and to take care of your family just as you would do. There's no government intrusion. There's no hearing to have. You name who the successor trustee is and that person will then serve. If that person can't, then the next in line. That's why we encourage people to name two or three successor trustees so that we can have a very smooth process if someone becomes incapacitated or when they pass away. A lot of people come in to see us when they need to probate, they have the will, their name is in there as executor, so they tell us, well, it's no problem, I'm executor, I'll just start taking care of things. Well, here's the thing about that. The executor is the person who you want to take care of things and who's empowered to do that, but when they're named in a will, they're basically nominated as an executor. They're not actually the acting executor yet. That requires a hearing. Even though it may not be a complex hearing, or it can be if there are a lot of objections from beneficiaries or heirs at law, but at the very least, we need a basic probate process where we file the petition, hopefully along with the consent of the heirs, and then the judge will have the person who is nominated in the will as executor sit down and raise their hand and take a little of a two-line oath, saying basically that they will follow the, uh, the Georgia law and they will execute the will as it is written because that's their duty. But that doesn't happen until the court swears the person in. In our experience here uh, in Southeast Georgia, often that takes 30 to 45 days at best to get someone appointed. It doesn't have to be that long, but there are just our probate court judges are pretty busy, so sometimes it takes a while. And when that person is appointed, they have other things they need to do before they, they can manage the assets. That is, they can take care of them, gather them. It's called marshalling the assets. And they can determine what debts the estate has, but they are not really supposed to take action in terms of distribution until a few things happen. First, that person is sworn in as executor, so they are the official executor. Then, usually with the help of an attorney, they run an ad in the paper called a Notice to Debtors and Creditors, which is just a little ad that says, this person has passed away. If you owed them money or if they owed you money, then please contact the executor. And it gives contact information either for the executor or the executor's attorney. From that period, from the last time that ad runs, it has to run for four consecutive weeks. From the last time that ad runs, there's a 90-day creditor claim period. Now, technically, the executor has authority and could start distributing things right away. We always advise against that because there is a, a statutory, that means it's set in Georgia law, a 90-day period after the last notice to debtors and creditors runs in the paper, the creditors have to make claims. If you don't wait as the executor, if you don't wait that 90-day period of time and some debts pop up that you were unaware of, some unpaid legitimate bills, those people who are owed the money can come not only after the estate, they could come after you individually as executor. So the executor position is significantly different, even though we're accomplishing the same goals, it's more cumbersome and uh, there's more of a 
legal court process to it to be an executor by comparison with being a successor trustee. Um, the successor trustee, instead of having to run the ad in the paper and wait a creditor claims period worth of time, 90 days, the trustee can basically step in immediately and start assessing what's in the estate and what the rules are for the person who's trusted is, what rules they've put down there for distribution of the assets. So things can go pretty quickly, especially if everyone is in agreement. So the thing to remember is if you are nominated in a will, you need to be appointed by the court in order to take over your duties as executor. If you are the trustee of a trust and you know the person who created the trust has passed away or is incapacitated, you should take action quickly, which means get all the documents you have, all the trust planning documents together and get back to the attorney who wrote it or to an attorney who knows about trusts and how they work so that you can get a new certificate of trust, get yourself appointed as now the acting trustee and start taking care of the people you're supposed to take care of with those trust funds. So that at a basic level is the difference between executor and trustee. I hope that was helpful. We'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please click below to subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll get a notification every time we post some. Right now, we're posting about three videos a week with all kinds of useful estate planning information. So click right down here so you don't miss anything about estate planning and click right here on your screen for the next relevant video.